7 o'clock, it's 7.02. All right, well, why don't we go ahead and get started? And uh, so I'll let me welcome you all, one and all, to the January 6th, 2022 Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission meeting. We're calling the or uh, meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. So we have one continuance tonight and three new applications, and then we have some additional business at the end of the meeting per our agenda. And let me do a quick roll call. Uh, if you would just say I when I call your name, Dennis. I. Luis. I. Melinda. I. Catherine. I. And Abby. I. All right, thank you. And voting members tonight will. Would, there are six of us here. Uh, I think Catherine, you'll be the non-voting member tonight, but you'll vote anyway. Just we have to. I was non. I was non-voting member last time. You were. Yeah, Dennis was the guy. All right. How well, about your? How I was. About, I didn't think so. All right. Let's, let's, want it. It's all yours. Yeah, let, all right. Let's, <laughs> let's, I want it. I want it. All right. The pressure's on you, Catherine, to make the right decisions. I will. I'm, I'm going to rise to the challenge. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, though. All right. Uh, so let me just uh, finish up here. We're conducting the meeting online in accordance with Commonwealth of Mass executive order. Uh, extended uh, executive order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. The public may access this call through the phone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and to provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To ask a question or comment, please raise your hand using the raise your hand function in the participant function uh, in the Zoom bar below. Uh, if you're calling in, you can uh, dial star nine or wave at us and we'll figure out how to get you uh, on the microphone. Uh, Heather, our host, will mute microphones uh, of those not speaking uh, in order to preserve the uh, background noise uh, or to limit background noise. If you if you see that somehow your mic has become unmuted, please mute yourself. That would be terrific. Uh, we do really just want the commissioners, the host, and the current petitioner on the mics. Um, once a uh, presentation is over, I'll call on each commissioner for comments, and then we'll open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, we'll bring the motion, uh, bring the bring it back to the commission for a motion to either continue, approve, approve the conditions, or not approve. Uh, I'll look for a second, and we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, and once we've acted on an application, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. So with that, and thank you all for listening, uh, I just wanna see, Heather, was there, were there any last minute additions to the agenda? No? All right then, I declare we should go ahead and get started. And uh, we're gonna start with our continuance, uh, which is, uh, 37 Lexington Road in the American Mile District. This is the Concord Art Association. Uh, it's an application for a certificate of appropriateness to uh, demolish a rear addition and construct a new two-story addition and then other work on the building as described uh, in the um, uh, agenda. We did have a site visit this morning. Thank you to the team there. I, I think I recognize you all without your masks on here. Uh, Kristen was there, Robert was there. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, John was there, John Battle, he's, I don't see him here. John's having a little trouble logging in, but please continue. Um, okay. Just give him a second. It might be, um, it's probably on his end, but um, please go ahead. Jeremy and I are here. So and Kate, you were there this morning as well, yes? All right, well, welcome back. Um, all right, so, uh, you all saw, I'm look, talking to the commission now. So we've, we saw the site, we looked at, uh, asked questions. Let me just see, are there any, uh, two things. Is there any additional information, uh, Robert, that you all wanna present this evening other than what we saw? Um, we did look into the public comments from, um, that, that came out earlier this week about, that, about that, adjusting that vestibule. Okay, do you um, want to talk we about can, that? We can, we can show that. We prefer to keep it everything to what we have. 
but we, we were respecting the, the comments from the public and we kind of did a quick study of what it would look like. I mean, we can show you that. Uh, I think that's okay. Let's, let's okay. look at it. I think that's a, a nice is that, is that something, um, Jeremy can take control of the screen and pop up like the last hearing? I think so. Yeah. Heather's nodding. Yes. So you can, you should be able to share the screen. Any luck? Hey, look, Jeremy. There it is. All right. So that's what it, how it would look if we didn't if if it, if we um created uh, respected that little vestibule for the comments from um the public. Uh, uh, and is this so? I guess the question is: Is this something you're proposing and and would like we, to do, or no? We rather keep it to what we have. Um, we do. We would just if there was an issue with the if if there's something we we if we had to go this way, we we could go make it work. But we would prefer to keep it to our original proposal. And could you? Sh is there a way to show us what that image would be from the same angle for the the current proposal? Sure. That would be great. Sorry, I had a little technical glitch there. That's all right. Hi, John. Welcome. We're just we're just showing we're just showing the image of the uh, John. Just give you up to speed. We're just showing the image of the proposed um, capturing the client the public feedback. Uh, and I just asked John if we could look at the same view of the current design, which I I think I understand, but I I don't uh, I don't have it right in front of me here. Let's see. Um, um let's see okay so there it is so basically what this does is what it extends the it extends the hip to join Correct. that yeah okay um okay and in their in their uh, letter to 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 your commission, they um, <clears throat> they specifically say that the whole goal is to try and retain. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not using their exact words. I could go find it and quote it. To to, to retain historic fabric. So uh, that is our intention. We are not intending intending to demolish this piece. Um, and in fact, if they, uh, I just think from a functional point of view, it works better for us. I also think it's visually uh, a little bit quieter. So I, I actually prefer it. Um, and so for those two reasons, I think, uh, in summary, we're, we're retaining the historic fabric. Um, and we could, uh, so those are, those are my two initial uh, thoughts. Okay. Uh, I, I get it. It's a, a fairly simple, uh, sort of, uh, that, thank you for doing the sketch. Frankly, it's, a, it's interesting to see what that would look like. It, it, to me, it looks a little orphaned if it's not connected. It sort of looks like a- I agree. Yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure what it would be there, um, but that's not, that's just, I'm sorry, I'm, I shouldn't opine yet. Um, what I think we ought to do, uh, why don't, Heather, is it easy enough to open, or, or I guess, Jeremy, if you've got the drawings, um, the plans, elevations, and the landscape package from the, from the submission, and, um, and then I thought I'd go around to each commissioner and see if there were any comments uh, from this morning, uh, but just to maybe just to give us a quick reminder of the project in case there are folks here from the public who uh, were here the last time, just a very quick run through of the project. Fine, so uh, I'll just try and give you a quick summary of our strategy here. Mm -hmm. um, so the intent was to try and find a, a way to increase classroom capacity. And so that our decision was to uh, to remove the existing classroom and to replace it with uh, a singular volume, which uh, could could operate as two classrooms or as one larger space, if under certain circumstances. Um, the the general care and, and in addition, in doing that, we added a small sliver that goes up towards the street, which contains some sort of backstage type space, um, kitchen and other support services. Um, the intent aesthetically was to try and articulate this building as 
um, something of this era, not of the original era of the <clears throat> antique structure. And so we have chosen to differentiate it using a more contemporary vocabulary, something appropriate for 2000, 2020 or 2022, now I can say. <clears throat> um, and uh, so that was our basic strategy. Um, is that enough of a summary or do you want me to go into detail? I, no, no, I, think, I, I, th I think so. No, thank you. I, <clears throat> I just wanted you to bet. get a, a very quick um, mm -hmm. background overview. Um, all right. So why don't we let's, let's go around and hear from commissioners, because I think we've all uh, we've all seen it. We're familiar with the design. Um, there are a couple of commissioners missing this evening, but that's their loss. There's not much I can do about that. So uh, how about we start with Dennis, the one non-voting member this evening? But you have to, there you go. You have to unmute yourself, Dennis. Sorry. So what I say makes no difference. Uh, anyway, I think the, uh, I don't know if Ann Forbes is among the people that are here or the other individual who put in the comments. Larry if, they, if they could uh, comment on um, John's proposal, if they're not destroying any original material, I don't initially have a, a problem with this. Um, the, um, although those little bump outs, you see them in houses all the time, it's architecturally correct to have that sort of bump out, extending it again as a more modern, uh, a more modern uh, treatment. Um, <clears throat> but if it's not destroying original material, then I don't, I don't see that I have a, a problem with it. Um, I'm intrigued by the fact that John presented the building as being more contemporary. It is in form, but it isn't in color. Actually, the front building's the wrong color. That's Colonial Revival white. The barn is closer to asphaltum, which was a brown black, which was used for barns as a primary color in the 18th century. Half of concrete would have had barns almost this color. So it's, in, it's a modern form, but, it, but an ancient uh, uh, coloration. So overall, I think it's a great, it's a great proposal. And I, uh, I think you've done a, a wonderful job on this. I'd just like to hear more about the bump out. Uh, can, I, can I interject about the color? Oh, actually, we have some supportive material which we didn't even bring up because it hadn't been a con hadn't been controversial, showing uh, historic barns in this sort of gray color, including a, a very visible <laughs> one out in Groton. Uh, just as you as you approach the center of the center of Groton town, there's a fantastic one on the right, um, which we have uh, photographs of to support to support this color choice if you if you would choose to go there. No, no need to do it from my point of view. <laughs> Thank you. And going to the great HDC database. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you, Dennis. Um, uh, let me wait and see if they're till public comment if those folks would like to speak. I don't, I don't think they're here actually, Dennis. But uh, let's keep going. Uh, I'm just going to go in order on my screen. Melinda, um, I had all of my questions answered this morning. I, I think the design is wonderful. Um, I was curious about after reading the comments um, uh, from the public about keeping that bump out, but I do think the look is better uh, with the extension into the addition there. And I, um, so I have no problem with that. And uh, I, I, I just think it's a beautiful design. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, let's see, Luis, you are next on my rotation unless you had to jump off camera there. Sorry. Uh -oh. Yeah, I got you mid. You got me nibbling a pizza. Red wine and cheese. <laughs> I think that this is a very good design. Um, I'm not totally agree that, that, that the structure is modern. I think that the structure is actually a quite a traditional. The materials <laughs> are modern and the color is uh, very traditional. So I think that it's the perfect mixture of the old and the new. But I think that most importantly, the uh, in initial impression that, that, that it's actually subliminal that this structure gives is uh, very reassuring. You see, it's something that's there, looks like uh, belongs there, and that it has always been there. So I commend the, art the, the architect for uh, the very good design. And I don't have any objections. And I have read the letter uh, from uh, the neighbors. And I don't believe that. Uh, uh, the treatment that it's being given to that festival uh, degrades in any way from from historical significance. So I would go along with the 
design as it has been proposed. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Uh, Catherine. So I echo all of my fellow commissioners thoughts. Um, I, I have thought this was a very successful project from, from the very beginning. Um, in fact, I remember looking at the, the rear elevation of the new barn structure um, in the drawings at the beginning and was just frankly very delighted by how well integrated I actually thought it was with the existing historical structure. It's just so clean, it's very harmonious with the skylights um, on the, the portion that's behind it. And um, I agree, I think it's just a very successful, very, very nice project. So uh, no, no further comment. Thank you, Catherine. And Abigail, what do you think? Um, so I, I agree, I think, um, I think it's appropriate um, given its location in the district. Um, I think it's subservient to the primary structure, which is what we're always concerned with, with secondary buildings and additions and the like. Um, I think it is, yes, it's a modern, a more modern interpretation, but it certainly calls back to the vocab of kind of big house, little house, back house, barn, um, which we see in a lot of these structures um, in town. So. I, I think it's quite successful in that um, in that regard, and I, I do think it's appropriate and fitting with our guidelines. Um, I had most of my questions, the kind of nitpicky ones about vent pipes and mechanicals and all of that, but I did want to have, if the team could review the landscape plan, I noted that there are four different light fixtures, exterior light fixtures in the landscape plan. If you could walk us through um, where each of those fixture types will be located, um, and the number of fixtures, um, and then you know the wattage and lumens and column that you're proposing. Um, we just always want to really nail down exterior lighting. And then we had discussed that the the railing in the renderings is not the railing that's being proposed, but it's a it's a fair sure. amount of of railing. As do you have photographs of of what it will actually look like? that's nailed down. It will be mimicking the existing railing that's there. Okay. That's sort of our point of departure. I think that in building the railing and the model, we were uh, we weren't as focused on that as we as we should have been. We weren't thinking about building things, not as much about the, the landscape. Um, Kristen, yeah. are you with us tonight? Right there, Jay. yeah. There you go. So that that's what it's going to look like. Okay. And Correct. how many how many kind of linear feet of that? It seems like is it all required by code? How much railing you have? Um, can we go back to the plan and I can see? It. Kristen, are you with us? Kristen's muted. I'm, I'm here. There you I'm go. Here. Okay, Sorry. good. Um, so the railing in the front uh, that goes to the um, existing vestibule, mm -hmm. that is a, that remains the existing length. That's what is currently there. Um, and then we've added a railing along the entire walkway to the back just because there is a drop off there since this is an elevated walkway. It's not required by code, but um, there as... Um, it is, the drop-off is as much as six inches. So we just, at this point, I think it's prudent to have a handrail there. It gets icy or something like that. Okay. Um, okay, that answered my question about the railing. And so if we could go through all the light fixtures, that would be, um, okay. that would be helpful. So I will tell you, we do not have lumens or anything like that um, figured out yet. Um, I can tell you they're all LED fixtures. Mm -hmm. And, um, We'll start with the the first one is the um, uh, is the Lumiere Cambria and I um, I think we have pictures of that right Jeremy yeah that's that's it but we would do it in a bronze finish um, it's a it's a very small um, path light um, and it almost disappears it's so small um, it would be located next to the front door steps. There's an existing light fixture there that has uh, fallen apart. So it would go there. Um, and then there would be one at the um, sort of at the beginning of the elevated walkway and along the walkway towards that back new school entrance. Okay. So there are four along there. They're spaced approximately, I think, um, I think they're like 12 plus feet apart, um, very low to the ground. It's just to illuminate the surface. There is a, 
fixture next to both of the doors. Uh, well, next to the, the existing vestibule and then one in the roof there, right? Above the school building entrance. Is that right, John? That's correct. Right. So this is just, to, it's very subtle lighting just to illuminate the path. It's nothing big. Um, and then in the back, um, so if you look at uh, the driveway, we have um, the new handicapped accessible ramp up to the patio. Um, that will um, again have these same small path lights along it, illuminating that path. Um, and then around the courtyard itself, right now there's no lighting out there at all. And that the edge of it, we would like to have some other small light fixtures just to identify that edge. Um, so I, can you pull up, um, Jeremy, the BK light stick? Yeah, so, uh, well, these aren't really, it's really the middle one. Again, it's very small, the fixture, um, and it would be in bronze again. Um, and it is, uh, it's just the minimal amount we need to illuminate that, uh, the edge of the patio, uh, because there are activities there in the evening. And right now, people often are stepping in the plant bed. Um, and then those path lights would continue along the new uh, pathway to access that rear patio. We're not showing any lighting on the patio itself. We've figured that the illumination from the um, school barn will provide plenty of illumination um, on the patio itself. Um, but we are proposing um, these BK Saratoga LEDs. Can you show that? Yeah. This again is a very small uplight. Um, it would be in bronze. I, I don't know the exact, yeah, it's four and a half inches um, <clears throat> in length. I mean, these are tiny light fixtures and they would just be washing that back wall there so that when you're inside the classroom or in the back, that back wall would be very gently illuminated. So, there are no down lights, everything, the, I mean, everything is a down light except for those wall washers. And then the last one is I do have two um, up lights um, on the trees in the back. And I, I, my understanding is maybe that might be a problem. So those are the um, BK Delta star LEDs, again, in bronze. Um, and these would just go under the existing, there's a small magnolia under the, um, in the corner of the building and there is a small dog with there. Again, it's just to provide some light in the outdoor space since there's not a lot of outdoor lighting there right now. Thank you, that, that's, that's certainly helpful to have you walk through all of that. Um, I would request that given that you don't have lumens and all that right now, which is fine, if that can just be submitted um, to Heather for administrative approval. Um, you'll see in our guidelines, we have limits on, okay. on each fixture. And as long as they're kind of under those limits, our, our request usually is, you know, as low as, you know, yeah. we want them as dim as possible while still being functional. Right. Um, the uplighting is something, and I'm curious to see what other commissioners feel about that. That is something that we, um, per the guidelines and just general practice, we tend to, um, kind of shy away from uplighting, certainly in the residential context. We've done it a little bit differently for some of the um, commercial spaces, just, just by virtue of, of public access. So um, I don't know if other people feel strongly about it. I, I think given how, um, uh, how far back these lights are from the, the main road, I'm not as concerned about them. Um, so, but if other people have, have concerns, I'm certainly open to hearing that. But that's, other than that, I think it's, um, I think it's, a, it's appropriate and, um, uh, and fitting with our guidelines, so. Thank you, Abby. Um, let me just add, I only have a couple of comments and I generally agree with everything that's been said by the commissioners before. Um, the one thing I'm a little, concerned about, and that may be the wrong word, is the on the right hand side on the, the landscape edge there, you know, people have gotten used to this, let's call it screen of 
scrub trees, or I'm not even sure what to call them, the sort of brush. When that, it, we've seen this happen in other projects. When that comes down, it's very dramatic all of a sudden. Um, and I understand there's going to be some planting going back in there. Um, so I, I'm not even sure this is more just a comment for for all of for the public to be aware of that when that comes down, it will be a, a rather dramatic change to that edge. But there is planting coming back to kind of recreate a more formal screen. Is that the right way to say it, Kristen? I wouldn't say it's a formal screen. I was um, trying to sort of be respectful of the neighbors next door and the fact that they're going to be um, really exposed to, to this new classroom building. The idea is that right, we are pushing the, um, the planting closer to the existing wall than it is now, but um, the plantings are, are all shrubs um, and we are maintaining as many of those trees as we can as possible, but they're all evergreen shrubs that will be planted along that edge. Okay. So it's not a formal row of any kind. The idea is to keep it pretty soft. Keep it soft. Yeah. And then my, my only other comment on there, and this is more a question for the architects, I understand there's a mechanical little barn enclosure there. We're always concerned about noise and reflective noise. Is that equipment, you know, let's call it a sound diminished as possible? Is it shielded? Um, only because there's nothing there now and it's going to go from zero to, you know, some noise. Well, the, the existing equipment for the, for the building is on that side of the, is on that side. Right, it's up, it's um, over. Yeah. So it's being moved a few feet closer to the property line. And okay. we will, um, we were planning on putting a wood fence there consistent with your guidelines for a preference for wood type thing. We'd be happy to use a closed uh, joint fence uh, that would be like a tongue and groove or a, um, <clears throat> some sort of solid block, which would give us the best chance of reducing, of diminishing sound. Um, the, there are more elaborate fences involved. This is not as big, like if you go over and look at the, at the uh, library, they have a full blown chiller behind their, yeah, behind the their, uh, and that the, the, the equipment now is um, for what we're doing is basically it's a, it's a, derivation of um we don't know the specific equipment just yet but it's a derivation of these mitsubishi split units which are which are in, immensely more quiet than than any of the big any of the big equipment so i think that uh just by the nature of the equipment it will be it will be quieter than than having that big chiller at the over at, they have over at the library so our plan was to just use a wood fence if you'd like us to provide something with and we're willing to make it solid if that's the, if that's desirable I, I'd also, can I just add that that's where the, um, there's a garage there. So that is where the neighbor's garage is located. Gotcha. So uh, it sort of provides a separation um, from the residents there. Yeah, and I, I don't have a request or even a proposed solution. I'm just noting that it is moving closer and it's now it's up against a bigger potential sound bounce. So, but if it's not gonna be loud, in the first place, I, it's probably not a concern. I just want to be aware of the, you know, it comes up in, in these I understand. approvals processes. Uh, all right, any, let me just ask the commissioners, were there any other follow-up comments given what you've heard on the landscape or anything else um, from Abby's questions? Luis. I just had a comment on the, on the lights uh, in the trees going upwards. And this is something that we in general have been uh, avoiding. Uh, because uh, you know the, the, the night sky compliance, and uh, because it's extremely uh, bad for for the nature habitats. But uh, this is a very confined place, and uh, probably the effect is going to be minimal. But I think, but anyway, I believe that uh, we should put as a requirement that these lights be on timers, and so they will only be applied when there's a need for people to be. Uh, walking around and so forth, and to uh, avoid uh, the, the light uh, as an ornamental device, which is always very attractive, but that's exactly what does all the problem. I don't have any problem as long as we put them on timers and they are only active when the people are using the building. I think that's fine. I think that the intent here is just to be able to, when there are, is, we're not trying to, to, to light the landscape in a glorious way. We're simply trying to be able to, in those events when there are outside functions, to be yeah. able to. 
uh, offer a selected, uh, a little bit, a, a, a bit of a, a sort of an, an expansive lighting to the back, back space. So we have, I'm not sure that you even, I think the timer might be, uh, I'd be much, I'd be much more inclined to limit it to say that it would be associated only with when there are events in the outside space. That's, um, that's so it's not a daily, it's not a daily activity and it's not going to, there's not going to be, um, <clears throat> It's not a safety issue or it's really no it's not a safety issue it's an occasional use it sounds like correct the okay. the wall the, the the fixtures lighting the stone wall um we would like to be able to use on a more regular basis um because when the studio is in use that will be a nice feature um but the up the up lights into the trees would certainly be only for uh, outdoor functions Uh, okay, well, I think then the thing to do is to is to somehow clarify that in a little follow up note. Um, okay. Fine. This to us, I think when I think it sounds like the lighting package needs some more development. Anyway, there's some choice of lumens and wattage and what have you. So I think when that comes, perhaps a note talking about how the landscape lighting will be controlled would help. Does that make sense? All right. Well, thank you, folks. Um, I think we've heard from all the commissioners, so I think it's time to open it up to public comment. So is there public comment on the application uh, for 37 Lexington Road for the work described on the agenda, uh, the addition and uh, renovation? I see Ryan Hanley. Ryan, go ahead. Welcome. Hi, thanks very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you all here. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm zooming in from just a few doors down from the uh, Concord Art, uh, uh, just down the road on Lexington. Um, I'll try and keep things brief, so because I know you have a full agenda here. But I want to just throw out three quick questions. Um, one is perhaps for Kate in her capacity as director of the museum. And that is, uh, I'm under the impression that the, um, that the studio that's being torn down is the Loring Coleman studio. And I'm just wondering if Loring Coleman's name will be uh, uh, retained as part of the new edition, if there are any plans for that. Hi, hi, Ryan. It was nice meeting you today. You yes, um, we will now have two classrooms and Loring Coleman's name will still be on one of those classrooms. And then the new classroom is a um, opportunity for somebody else to be named for uh -huh. that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Great. I'm delighted to hear that. And thank you for that. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, he, he, we loved Loring. He's, he is easy. He apparently was easy to love. I never met him. But yeah, <laughs> we would never take his name out. Great. Uh, I've been enjoying his art over uh, at the other museum on the other side of me on uh, uh, in, in uh, Lexington Road. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, a second question. Um, just to go back uh, to the um, uh, to the new classroom edition and especially the street view uh, on the east elevation here, um, I think I share the same opinion, and it's been said many times. I think John's design is is it's really genuinely beautiful, uh, and I appreciate also as a professional historian myself uh, that the research going into having found the precedent for this in Groton. Um, I will, I do have one reservation. I think it's worth some discussion perhaps, which is um, what makes it so aesthetically pleasing is uh, the fact uh, that it's both um, modern and that it ties in, of course, the barn look. Um, one of the questions though, I think that's incumbent upon um, the commission to perhaps discuss is um, the fact that this is being placed here so close to Concord Center uh, and in fact is in town rather than where one would expect to find a barn. And so while um, this integrates very well with a lot of modern architecture, uh, its place within Lower Lexington Road and the Lexington Road uh, Monument Avenue Historical District, I think in the context of the surrounding buildings is something that might be asked. So I wonder, uh, and maybe this, I'll just put this out to John, has there been any consideration of perhaps retaining what you've done so beautifully here, which is distinguish the new building from the old, not trying to tie them together in any way seamlessly, but perhaps in minimizing some of the visual contrast, I think in terms of especially those, uh, the one by six verticals, as well as the black uh, waterboards, um, is there any possible sense that it might be, um, uh, are there minimal changes that could be made to integrate that a little bit more easily with the white clabber that we have uh, in terms of the extant uh, fabric? Peter, would you like me to just address this now? Go ahead, John. 
Yeah. Um, so we looked at several different colors, colored uh, variations and, and, a, and a, ra a range of color variations and a range of exterior detailing as well. And came to the, came to the ultimately, you have to kind of, you, you can only present one design. So we came to the conclusion that the best design, which ones had sort of uh, conceptual clarity um, and d offered a distinct articulation of this as a singular volume. You'll notice that the art barn as we, as the term that we've been using for it really is just that one long, uh, that, that one long ridge line. Um, and so we chose to use the, a different roof material, a different side of material, a different exterior detailing. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to give you the full presentation, which we talked about at the first, our first presentation, Ryan, where we sort of went through the logic about how we chose to use a sort of a tighter, more contemporary detailing on the roof lines and the materials. But we were trying to, to kind of make it a unified statement about it being of a, of a, of a more, uh, of it being built in this era, not in, the, in that historic era. So could, could you soften that and change the color? Yes, you could, but ultimately it comes down to, um, you need to present one design. And when we get into doing something like this, we, you, you ask uh, 10 people opinions, you'll get, the, you'll, you'll get at least 11 opinions. So uh, we, think, we felt that this was a, a concise expression of what our overall intent was. And so that's how we, that's how we kind of brought ourselves to these, um, these small scale decisions. Great, and um, uh, and again, I think that you've really succeeded uh, in, in terms of, uh, of that integration. Um, I just see it as, as a, I'm a very new Concordian. I've been here all of six months, uh, and I have spent a lot of time walking my dogs up and down Lexington Road and thinking about the way that it all unifies. And um, uh, and I'm I'm curious as to how this uh, will will create a striking statement. Um, I'll just skip to the third question because I know that there's a, a lot of other business here. Just to, so that I can understand, because I know that the public comment that was made by uh, Larry Sorley and Ann Forbes, just so that I understand the, um, the, the proposed demolition of extant 18th and 19th century fabric, am I right to think that it will include the north wall of the current east vestibule as well as part of the northern extension off that on the east wall. That is the extant, I know that there's a double six by six right behind the current uh, uh, east vestibule. Am I right to think that both of those will have to be part of the current demolition? So the, the intent was to, to, is to remove uh, the back wall of the existing vestibule mm -hmm. um, and to extrude the, the three-dimensional volume such that we kept the roof line, the front wall and the roof line in place. And um, so you can see in those dotted lines what our intended um, wall removal, uh, that's, the best, that's the best articulation of what, will be, what is being removed. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Ryan, can I add one thing? I'm so sorry. The actually, actually, the building next to Concord Art, to if you're facing the building to the left, was the old um, workshop for the original um, people who lived there. It was a um, metalsmith who who worked in a in what was their outbuilding, their barn on Lexington Road. So that I guess that's a little bit of a precedent, although it was not attached to the building. So. So maybe we could think of it more as the art, as a workshop <laughs> or a, <laughs> so it could be because people did, um, you, you know, use outbuildings in the town for their, for their work. So, yeah. Yes. And in fact, uh, our current kitchen is, is one of those. Uh, so I can appreciate that, that precedent. Yeah. Thank you though, for your comments. I love it when people um, show interest and um, want to know the facts. Thank you. Also, Ryan, I, I bet if you begin to walk your dog up Lowell Road and up Monument, you'll, you'll see there's a real kind of interesting, I think, lovely mixture of different types of building and outs building in addition, right really toward the center of town. John, you, I don't know, you, I, I've seen probably too much private property to, for my own good, not being on this commission, so I get to walk into people's backyards, but uh, I don't know, John, what you think. I think 
there's a mix already in town. Oh, I think I think having you, there's, there's so many examples of, in fact, there are many still hidden examples of fine carriage houses and barns tucked behind houses that you still end up being as as we discussed there in the site. This one, there still ends up being that little element of surprise. Is it's not just a repetition. It's just not more of the same. We wanted it to be distinctly to have a sense of being something that was of its own of its own spirit and and of this era. So those were uh, intentional. Uh, I don't want to call them side effects because they, but they were, those were actually part of our intentions. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, let me just keep going. Is there additional public comment? I didn't, don't want to keep folks from speaking, and I'm looking around for. Do you see any raised hands, Heather? No raised hands. Anybody waving frantically at me? Don't see anybody. Oh, Stan. There's Stan. Stan Black. Stan, go ahead. But uh, you're muted, though. Stan, Stan you got to unmute yourself. No, we can't hear you, Stan. That's probably just as well. There you are. There you are. <laughs> there, just two two very minor points here, reiterating what was said already. We have a lot of um, elderly participants in the Concord Center for the Visual Arts, so that continuous handrail is important for them to get from the street to the new classrooms area. And then secondly, we're not an affluent organization and we do rely to some degree on catering. And the uh, suggestion that Ann Forbes made reduces the size of our kitchen to the point where we can't uh, cook that pheasant under glass that most of our uh, participants want. So uh, that's a vote for keeping it the way it is. Thank you. Wait a second, nobody said anything about pheasant. <laughs> that wasn't in the application. Maybe that's inappropriate. I want to be invited. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Other comment? Any other comment? All right. Why don't I bring it back to the commission? Uh, so let's just, there aren't that many of us here this evening. Any last thoughts before we uh, bring this to a vote uh, from the commissioners? I'm just going to kind of look around and see if anybody wants to weigh in. I think not. I think we're we're ready to take a vote. So, uh, why don't I look for a motion from the commission, please? I move that we uh, approve the certificate of appropriateness to demolish a rear addition and construct a new two-story addition, new dormers, lightning gutters, and damp spots, a new terrace, walkways, retaining wall handicap ramps with handrails, bulkhead fencing, landscape lightning, and other associated landscape changes. Uh, with uh, the restrictions that uh, there will be administrative approval for the uh, location and the wattage of uh, the light uh, fixtures prior to final approval. And the control, I would add, just as a friendly amendment, the control of those fixtures. And the control of those fixtures. All right, thank you, Luis. Could I get a second, please? Uh, Melinda, Melinda. I'll second. I'll second. Right. I'm, I'm just okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, let me go around and take a vote. If you would give me an aye or a no, Dennis. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Uh, Luis. Aye. Catherine. Aye. Abigail and friend. <laughs> Bo both say hi. <laughs> and I'm an I as well. All right, so you are approved and you're good to go and good luck getting uh, folks to do the work. When does the construction start, by the way? We're now going into, we've been to use this as a springboard to complete the rest of the uh, town review and permitting process. We have other hearings to go through. Um, we have a special permit through the uh, a ZBA. So we have a we have a few more regulatory hurdles, and we'll be uh, in the in the fundraising process over the course of the next few months. And we're we're in it now, but it's 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 ongoing. Okay, thank you. We're, we hope I to would... be able to begin construction, probably uh, the best of all worlds in the fall, uh, otherwise in the spring of the following year. And I just wanted to follow up, John. Sorry, I meant to make this point earlier. With projects of this uh, 
and of this nature, we like to check in at the end of each phase with the drawings to see if we're all still on the same page. So these are DD drawings, right? Or design development? Yeah, these are design development, yeah. So can we check in at CDs and just do a quick uh, check in to make sure nothing dramatic you can, is changed? You, you, can, you can stop by whenever you want. <laughs> okay. We'll, give you, think, we'll get you drawings. <laughs> okay, I think that's Heather. What we may wanna do is just put in the approval that we check in at the end of the drawings phase and then we'll, We'll just try to pay attention during construction in case something changes. We'll come by okay. to every other site meeting or something and just wave. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you all and uh, appreciate your time and efforts. Nicely done. Thank you for your support. Okay, okay. good night now. All right, good night folks. All right, so that is our continuance and, and thank you folks for hanging in there with us. So uh, we're into new public hearings and this uh, first one is 324 Sudbury Road. Uh, John Robley and Michelle Flum, I, did I pronounce that correctly? Or Flum? Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, in the Hubbardsville district to uh, reconstruct a certificate to reconstruct a sleeping porch, including doors and screens and to remove concrete steps. So yeah. uh, do you, would you folks mind walking us through the application? Sure, so the, we're working on restoring the house. Yep. This is the third, this is gonna be the third and final phase and it involves the sleeping porch as you can see pictured. And can Heather's you bring up the picture on the screen? Yeah, but Heather's gonna bring those up. And essentially what we're doing here is because the structure, that's that right there. The structure is, is starting to crumble in places. We're getting chipmunks running around underneath and whatever. We need to, as opposed to repairing it, we just would like to just replace as existing because of the condition of the structure. And then after we rebuild as existing, we would also like, as opposed to these alum aluminum clunky doors, to instead put screens in place using a material that's very similar to what would have been used at the time period. And then the third thing that we would like to do is if you look at the very bottom on that concrete pad, there's some random steps to nowhere. We just want to eliminate those. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's those three steps. I mean, well, it's not that simple, but essentially that is the, the scope of the project. Yeah. Dennis, would you, you like actually have packages go missing because the FedEx driver would leave them on those steps and it'd be a couple of days until we could find them. So, you know. Yeah. Dennis wants those steps. Can we, can you get over there with a wheelbarrow, Dennis? No, I don't. Okay. I'm not going to be giving Dennis a two-step program. No. Sorry. And we could loan you our cat for the chipmunks if you'd like, although there might be too many. Uh, all right. So uh, is there a picture, was it in the application of the screen material? There it right. is. So it's essentially that. So yeah. it's essentially all of the detailing is going to be the same. And this is just a way of all of the detail will still be visible. We just have screen material there. Yeah. It's very minimal um, the way that our contractor has done it in the past. This is an example of his most recent work. Yeah, this is out somewhere on Wood Street, correct? Yes. Yeah. So he, George has done this work on Wood Street. So he will... Uh, will replicate the screen approach with um, all, all of the existing patterning for the railings on our um, yeah. uh, on, on our sleeping porch. So the long and the short is it's going to look exactly the same from the right.